Hello, dear friends. You are on the video channel Echoes of the Ancient World, a channel for fans of military history. If you like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy watching. The Heteroi, from the Greek companions, were part of the aristocratic circle of Macedonian kings. They served as counsel and entourage to the ruler both in peacetime and during war, and the preservation of this institution ensured the archaic socio-economic and political structure of life in Macedonia. Most Macedonian Heteroi were aristocrats and large landowners, whom the king kept at his court to ensure their loyalty. From the original 800 members of the Companions Cavalry, Philip created a large formation of heavily armed cavalry. The foundation of the cavalry was the Ela, consisting of 200 men divided into four tetrarchies of 49 men each, commanded by a tetrarch. The tactical formation of the tetrarchies was called a wedge on the battlefield, with four wedges formed in a line with specific intervals necessary for maneuvering. Cavalry was capable of tactical movements that were not available to infantry. Mobility was so crucial to confront the enemy in battle. Philip increased the number of Heteroi to 3,500, accepting not only Macedonian aristocrats but also notable foreigners into its ranks. Those who joined him in service were appointed as officers of the Macedonian army, military commanders, and provincial governors. In the army of Philip and Alexander, Heteroi formed a privileged heavy cavalry unit, heading to the east. Alexander left Antipater with one and a half thousand Heteroi, taking the remaining 1,800 with him. His Heteroi were divided into eight units of 230 riders each. The first royal Ella, in Macedonian Agemo was a unit of doubled strength, led by the king himself. The name Ela reflects the territorial principle of recruitment. During the Persian campaign of Alexander, his companions acted as a striking force against the Persian cavalry and infantry. They attacked with lances held in front of them, delivering decisive blows and determining the outcome of battles in the armies of Alexander's successors. Royal relatives, friends, and associates served in the similar elite units of companion cavalry. The main weapon of Alexander the Great's Macedonian cavalry was the lance, which had a pointed tip at one end and a bronze or iron socket at the other. In a mosaic depicting the Battle of Issus, Alexander holds the lance with one hand in the middle of the shaft. There were only two ways to hold the lance, with the arm bent and held up or parallel to the thigh. In the former case, the blow was struck from top to bottom, while in the latter case, the blow was struck straight or from bottom to top. To change the position of the weapon, it had to be held in both hands. Therefore, any manipulation with it during the battle was extremely difficult. The Macedonian cavalry armed with lances could effectively act against heavily armed cavalry and infantry. The impact of a lance could not be withstood by either a shield or armor, given the length of the lance and the speed of the horse. As experiments have shown, a rider could hardly pull out the lance from a slain enemy's body while riding. Therefore, the Macedonian cavalry had to abandon their weapons after the first strike and then draw their swords. The Copa sword is a single-edged sword with a blade length of 80 to 90 centimeters. The crossguard has a common end with the back, and its other end asymmetrically overhangs the blade. The handle is usually shaped like a bird's head and forms a semicircle to protect the wrist and hand. In the most luxurious examples, bone overlays and gold appliques were used in the handle production. The massive thickness of the blade up to 8 mm ensured high strength when striking. The forward curved shape of the blade, expanding in the last third, was perfectly adapted for delivering chopping blows. It is no coincidence that Xenophon recommends in his work on horsemanship to arm riders with a curved copus, with which one can chop the enemy from above with force. They did not use a straight sword, which was usually used for stabbing, according to the Greek historian Diodorus, there is no helmet or bone that could withstand a blow from such a sword. Warriors carried the copus on their left side in wooden leather covered scabbards suspended from a shoulder belt. Xenophon, a recognized authority in military affairs of the 4th century BCE, recommends the biotic helmet for equipping riders, which, according to him, protects the head and does not hinder vision. 
This description corresponds to a series of artistic images that can be associated with the era of Alexander the Great. As a rule, the hoplites were equipped with biotic helmets. A biotic helmet is one of the most common types of helmets that was widely used in Central Asia and the Middle East by both ordinary soldiers and rulers. Images of people in biotic helmets are often found on coins. The use of the biotic helmet covers a large part of the Hellenistic era. In the last stages, in the 2nd and 1st centuries BCE, modified helmet models appeared, in which the main elements of the biotic prototype are still clearly recognizable. The shape of the helmet resembles a biotic felt cap with wide brims, which is likely where its name comes from. Unlike the similar in shape pillows, the biotic helmet has larger brims and a steep angle of curvature. In the front part of the helmet, it forms an angle of approximately 130 degrees, creating a wide visor that provides the helmet's owner with good protection from hits on the sides and back. This angle of inclination is slightly less steep. A characteristic feature of the biotic helmet is its side concave folds, designed to give the brims the necessary rigidity. No traces of attachment of the lining to the base of the helmet were found. It may have been glued from the inside. Originally, the biotic helmet was worn without patches depicting predators. Later, with the appearance of modified helmet forms, which had joints for suspending patches with images of predators, two pairs of holes were made over the side brims. The helmet was made of bronze sheet approximately one and a half millimeters thick. The weight of the helmet is approximately one kilogram. Riders usually wear armor. Among them, traditional linen armor reinforced with bronze scales and metal overlays is most often represented. According to archaeological finds, there were also solid metal bronze and, less commonly, iron armor of Alexander's warriors. Such armor is a two-piece breastplate consisting of a chest and back part. They were fastened to each other on the sides and shoulders using hinges and straps. Most breastplates have a shortened form, protecting the torso and its owner only up to the waist. Several panels from southern Italy, dating back to the second half of the 4th century BCE, have full length, covering the lower part of the abdomen and upper part of the thighs. The very wide lower part of the breastplate indicates that it belonged to a rider, allowing the owner to sit on a horse without any difficulty. The shape of the breastplate corresponds to the anatomy of the human body, accurately reproducing the relief of the chest and abdominal muscles. Xenophon advised riders to adjust their armor to their size, the breastplate should be made to measure because a well-fitting breastplate holds the entire body, weak only on the shoulders, while one that is too narrow is more of a hindrance than armor. To protect the metal surface from corrosion, it was coated with a thin layer of tin. The mirror-like shine of the metal created the illusion of silver. However, it is known from the description that armor could also be covered with silver or even gold. Riders wore high leather boots with laces. Their popularity is associated with numerous depictions by Greek artists, who portrayed such boots as an attribute of travelers, hunters, and warriors. For riders, wearing these boots had an additional meaning, as they served as a means of protecting their shins from thorny shrubs, which grow abundantly in Greece, and from the enemy's weapons. In addition, high leather shin guards were supposed to protect the rider's skin from corrosive horse sweat. Macedonian riders usually did not use saddles. They placed a felt or quilted fabric blanket called a cheprak on the horse's back, which was held in place by a wide girth. The cheprak was a simple rectangle made of felt or quilted fabric. In some cases, a discarded cover could be used for this purpose, as can be seen in the sculptures and mosaics of the Hellenistic period. The main task of the cheprak was to protect the rider's thighs from corrosive horse sweat. Xenophon advised riders to use a thick quilted cheprak, which provides a stable seat and does not rub the horse's back. At the same time, he criticized the Persians for covering their horses with many blankets, like a bed, which made Persian riders sit softly but unsteadily. The Macedonian cavalry, known as the Heteroi, played a crucial role in Alexander the Great's conquests. Their tactics and equipment were meticulously planned and executed, making them an unstoppable force on the battlefield. 
The Heteroi were trained to charge and break enemy lines, then quickly turn and charge again. Their equipment included long spears, and bronze breastplates, providing protection and the ability to quickly attack from a distance. The Heteroi's success was not just due to their equipment, but also to their rigorous training and discipline. Their legacy can still be seen today in modern military tactics, making them true echoes of the ancient world. Thank you for watching my video. If you have any more questions or requests in the future, please do not hesitate to ask. Have a great day.